It's good to see the family of, of the living God this morning. This morning, we are worshiping our living God. And are we ready to continue worshiping the living God? And of course, we're going to say amen. Uh, there are many, many, many churches of Christ in this day that are worshiping the living God. And apart of many or local churches of Christ around the country and around the world, there are also many other churches worshiping God. The title or the message for this morning is this one, how to worship God. Genesis, we got, we read one example in Genesis chapter four, verse one through verse seven. Thanks brother Alex for that. And we, we read over there in the Bible, the example of two worshipers, worshiping the Lord. Like I said before, there are also too many other churches, thousands of churches, worshiping the Lord on Sunday, other day that the local congregation are already scheduled, and all of them are saying that are worshiping the Lord. These two guys too, they said this, they said the same thing. We are worshiping our God. The question is, does God accept any form of worship? Or does God accept all types of worship? In today's culture, we are living in a culture that you hear things, for example, like it doesn't really, talking about faith, about religion, you are gonna hear that people say, it doesn't really matter how you worship God. As long as you have a good motives, and a good heart, and a good mind, and a good intention, that's good enough. And yesterday when I was going to work, I heard in the radio a, a teaching, a preaching, and the preacher was saying, if you are thinking that you need to read the Bible or study the Bible to be saved, you're wrong. If you are thinking that you need to attend to the church services to be saved, you are wrong because the Savior is Jesus Christ. And in part, it was right. At the same time, it was wrong. Because the Lord, the Savior, who is Jesus Christ, is demanding us to worship him. But he said how to worship him. Not only to worship him. And Jesus Christ, of course, is the Savior. But that Savior, who is Jesus Christ, is requiring from us to study the Bible, to read the Bible, to attend to the services. That's the reason that you're gonna hear a lot of people, religious people saying, I don't need to be congregated. I, I can't stay at home reading the Bible, praying to my Lord and, and being a good person, helping to others, that's good enough. That's not good enough. It's good, but it's not good enough. The Lord is demanding, is requiring more things. It's necessary to study the Bible to know the will of the Lord. So how to worship God? Not according like the word said or the culture say. I don't care about the culture right here. We have to follow the Bible. In, in, in other countries, there are different cultures. I don't care about my heart too much. Heart is good, good. But we don't have to be trusting too much in our heart. We must to trust in the Bible. The Bible, this is our guide to worship God. So let, let's define or defining the word worship. What's the word worship mean? According to Google, Google is giving a good definition. I took this one from Google, but you can check it up in um, a biblical dictionary, but this is a good definition. Google said, feeling, Worship is mean a feeling or expression of reverence 
in adoration for a year. That's a good definition. Feeling is not only at the time when I decide or we decide to worship or Lord that we're going to have the feeling. That's good. That's the beginning. That's the process. But the second step is we're going to express. It's necessary to express this feeling that we are feeling to adore or create. That's good. Adoration, in reverence, that means in a respectful way, with a lot of respect, in a respectful way when we are approaching to our Lord. And I took the Greek, I don't know about Greek. Don't think that I know about Greek. So don't judge me for the pronunciation of this, of, of this word. It's latria, latria, that is the, the Greek word or worship. And this war means cult. At the time that we are worshiping the Lord, we are giving a cult, offering a cult to the Lord. Adoration. Devotion. That's the meaning of the word worship in the Greek. Why I decided to write it down the Greek? Because the New Testament was written in Greek. What about Hebrew? The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. And the Hebrew word for worship is chaha. Again, don't pay attention too much on my pronunciation. Chaha is the Hebrew word for worship. So if we are agreed with this concept about the word worship, let's move forward with the class. And the scripture reading is about these two worshipers, Cain and Abel. Everybody knows about this story. Even the people that they don't believe in God. Even the atheists, they know about this story. And they start accusing God or saying the Bible is not a good book. Uh, and they start talking about the wife of Cain and adoring. Many other stories to try to find contradictions in the Bible. But that's not our topic for this morning. It's about the worship. How to worship God? Two worshipers, Cain and Abel. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. This means that they continue believing in God. They are giving thanks to their creator. They are recognizing that the Lord is the creator. I have acquired a man from the Lord. This is a blessing. He gave me a song and it's a blessing. Thank you so much, Lord. That's, that's good. Then she bore again. This time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep or a shepherd. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of the time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering. The Bible is a summary. It wasn't one, one day and the next day. You understand that. It's a, a process of time. But it's a summary. Cain brought an offering of the fruit or the ground or the, to the Lord because he was an agriculture, you know, and he was working on the ground. And Abel was a shepherd. The Bible says Abel also brought for the firstborn of his flock and other family. But pay attention right here. I underline this because we must to pay attention to this. The offering of Abel is, is specific. The offering of Cain only that he brought fruit of the ground. Only like that. But the offering of the Abel, the Lord said, brought me the firstborn of his flock and all their fat. Not only the first one, but the fatter one. 
and the Lord respect Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. And his countenance or his face fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should roll over it. Anyway, it is sin came to our heart. We got the power to rule that wrong or evil thought. We got the power to control that. We, we are going to decide if do it or not do it. Nobody is going to be pushing you. Nobody is going to be stopping you. The Lord is not going to be stopping you. The devil is not going to be pushing you. You're going to take your own decision. We are rulers or our decisions. But let's come back a little bit about the, the time of the worship service. Both of them came to the presence of the Lord. They approached with offerings. Somebody can say, or the enemies of God said, this is a, this is a, a bad guy. This is a mean God. He didn't respect the offering of Cain. Only Abel offering respect. And people said, we don't know why God didn't respect Cain offering, but respect Abel offering. Yes, we know. The same Bible implied why was the reason. Let's remember this one. When God tell us to worship him, he also give instructions how to worship him. Right here in the same verse, the Bible implied when the Lord asked him, if you do well, how I suppose that we are going to be doing well at the time to worship God if we don't know how to worship him? How are we supposed to do that? So when the Lord God is telling him, if you do well, if you use or pay attention or use your brain in the right way, you are going to be worshiping me in the right way. If you do well, will you not be accepted? That's the question that the Lord is asking to Cain. Did you do well? Did you follow my instruction? In other words, did you follow my instructions at the time to worship me? He wants to do. He desires to do the things that he desires to bring to the Lord. He only brought fruits. He didn't care too much. He were the best fruits. He didn't care about that, only to bring an offering. A brother Pete was leading the, the second prayer, and he said, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. And that's a, a, a correct prayer. When we are asking and praying in that way, that's correct. But it's most correct if we are doers of the right worshiper, worshiping service. It's most, more correct. So this implies right here that the Lord God gave instruction both to both of them. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not well, sin lies at the door. Now you are angry. The Bible said in the book of Ephesians, it's not a sin to be angry, but be angry, but not sin. Now he's upset, he's angry, and he's saying, I'm going to invite to my brother outside. And then, because God didn't accept my offering, I'm going to kill this one. Things 
the desires to be seen is for you. That's what the Lord said. Now you are angry, you are upset, but if you want, you can stop that one. You can change, you can change your face if you want. He was so arrogant, and he said, no, I'm going to go, and now I'm going to kill this one. This is another worshiper. This is in my way. I'm going to kill this one. And now I'm, 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 I'm going to be the only one worshiper, and God is going to have to accept my offering in my own way or according to my own heart. God is saying, no. no. Like I said, this same Bible implies that over there, that God gave instruction today to them, I'm sorry, how to worship him. But they didn't want, or he didn't want to do it in the right way. God's requirements. God, before to do something, he always give a path how to do it. For example, before the flood, he gave the pattern to Noah how to build the ark. All the instructions in the Old Testament. We find another or many other instructions how to do the things. In this case, or these two worshippers, is the same process. To the church, God gave to the church requirements how to worship. For example, we were serving the Lord's Supper. Why? Because we want to do it on the first day of the week? Why don't we do it on Wednesday? Why not on Wednesday? No requirement from the Lord to do it on Wednesday. What about the offering? Or let's think, not the Lord's Supper, but the offering. We, we can collect the offering on Wednesday and Sunday. If Gonna get, we're going to get more money. It's going to be much better. There are churches that they are congregated almost every day, and every day they are collecting money. Where is the pattern for that? And they also say that they are worshiping the Lord. Are God's requirements to do that? The Lord gave requirement to these, these two gentlemen. To worship him. The Lord said, if you do well, will not be accepted? Of course, yes. You didn't follow my instructions. That's the reason it's not possible to accept your offering. So the question again, again, does God accept all types of worship? No. No. He doesn't accept all types of worships. Only the worship that he is requiring, only according to his will. And we, we read Romans chapter 10, verse 17. By faith. Faith is by hearing. And Roman, Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, hearing by the word of God. So we must do follow the instructions of the Lord through the Bible, in this case of Cain and Abel, the voice of God. It was directly to them. The voice of God, he spoke to both of them. Somebody can say, Brother Carlos, but how do you know that? The Bible, it doesn't say that, that God spoke to both of them. Where do you read that? Romans chapter 10, verse 17. If people say, no, they brought the offering according to their own heart. Oh, and so we don't need to follow the Bible to worship God, and we must to follow our own heart at the time to worship God? If that's correct, and so everybody that is worshiping according to their heart is correct before God. We have to conclude that way. That's wrong. It's a wrong conclusion. We must to worship God According to his instructions, according to God's will, according to God's requirements. There are requirements to be an elder. There are requirements to be a deacon. 
there are requirements to be a Christian. How to be a Christian? Where do we read those requirements? It's very simple. In Hebrew chapter 11, verse 4, also says, Able, these are contexts of that case. Able offered to God. Going back, the writer of Hebrew, he went back to Genesis chapter 4. And he brought to the church the example how to worship God. And the writer of Hebrew said, Abel offered to God. And everybody knows that. You know that. Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain. Why? Why a better sacrifice? Because Abel got a better heart. Oh, he was in, in that case. He was in Cain's fault. He didn't have a good heart. No. It's not at the point. Even if we have a bad heart, the Lord said that we must do change. And the word is God. Change us. Make us different. To think different. To act different. Think different according to his will. So that's the other context. He paid attention at the time when the Lord spoke to him. And that's the reason that he said, this is our creator. This is a, a respectful God. This is a holy God. This is a good God. He deserves everything. I'm going to bring the best for him. When we come right here to this building, we, we, must, we must be thinking and coming to be gathered together with my, with my brothers and sisters and before the presence of my Lord. And I'm going to try to give my best for my Lord. The best. Brother Joe was praying. The Lord has blessed him with many blessings during this week, but we are just giving a little bit. The rest of that blessing is in our pocket. To pay rent, to pay bills, to pay cell phone, to buy food, to pay the car, etc., etc. You know. We love. We faith. That was the reason that the Lord didn't respect the other offering. No. He wants to do it his own way. Not to my way. We must do it, worship God to God according to God's way, not to our own way. What about this other example? Two more elements. Native and Abihu. Two sons of the high priest Aaron, the brother of Moses. Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it. Ready. The two priests ready to come to the temple. Not to the temple, but to the tent. It wasn't a temple at that time. But to the tabernacle. Ready to worship God. Put incense on it. And offer and offer profane fire before the Lord, which had not commanded them. You see this? It's not only to try to worship God. The point is to worship God according to his requirement. The intention probably were good. We're going to come to worship God. Brothers and sisters, they were priests. Two priests. Why we can't surprise it, it, it suddenly? I'm a teacher, a preacher. He's doing wrong things. Remember, I'm just a human man. If I don't follow God, if I don't follow the instruction of God, I can make wrong. So fire went out from the Lord. And the board then. 
they die before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke saying. By those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all the people, I must be glorified. So Aaron heard this. It was so hard. Feeling that pain in his heart because his two sons were dead. But he's in silence before the Lord. He knew they did wrong. The Lord is holy. Peter said, the apostle Peter said, be holy, that the Lord said, be holy because I'm holy. We are going to approach into the presence of the Lord. Let's keep in mind this one. He is holy. We must be holy. We are the family of God. We are the church of the living God. We must be holy because he is holy. And we must be example in life for others. If we are a good example, if we are a good life, people is going to be glorified God outside. If we are not alive, people is going to curse God. That's what, what the Lord is saying through his prophet. And before all the people, I must be glorified. You are doing well, priest. The rest of the congregation of Israel is going to be glorifying my name. But you are not doing good, please. The whole congregation of Israel is not, not, is not going to be glorified in my name. What's the sign? And again, those God accept all type of worships? No. Absolutely no. I don't know. What is our motivation when we come right here to worship God on Sunday? I don't know. You know. I know my own motivation. But we must have a motivation. I don't know their motivation. But these two uh, men of God, they were two priests. Probably pride. Uh, we, know, we know about this one. We are now priests. We are important men before the whole congregation. I'm a deacon now. I'm a deacon. Please respect me. Because I'm a deacon. Oh, Charles can say. Sorry, Charles. I, I keep in mind that's the reason that I, I use you like example. Because you are a good example for me. Oh, I was an elder and I, I work hard for this congregation. People must continue respecting me too much. Oh, Brother Mike, oh, I'm a good teacher for this congregation. Oh, Brother Pete, oh, and now I'm going to be a deacon. I'm going to be Brother Carlos Sai too, like a deacon. Right, that's right. I have known, I have known teachers and preachers that they don't continue studying too much the Bible. They said, I know. All the sermons that you are saying, I know that by memory. I don't continue, I don't need to continue studying this one. I was in one occasion in my country giving a lesson, and after I finished the, les the lesson, the preacher told me, you know, Brother Carlos, I really know all those things that you were teaching tonight. Oh, oh that's good, brother. That's good, excellent. Like that. That's kind of pride. I don't know. I don't know what were their motivation for the two priests. I don't know. But probably that. Pride, ambition, ambition of power. We want to be not the priest, but the high priest. It's a higher position. What about jealousy? Maybe, maybe. The, I don't know. Don't think that I'm right in this one that I wrote right here or teaching this morning. Jealousy. Maybe they were jealous of the other priests, even of the high priest. Or what about impatience? We are so tired. We need to be doing something new, something different. In, in the book of Leviticus chapter 8, 
Verse 35, it said that they were almost, well, not almost, one week, day and night, offering sacrifices. Offering sacrifices. And maybe they were tired and they, 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 they wanted to consider uh, something different, to continue worshiping God in a different way. It's the same thing. It's the same thing that we start thinking. Brothers and sisters, elders, every Sunday, we are doing the same. We are partaking the Lord's Supper, collecting the offering. Why don't we do something different? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's mean that we start changing our heart. That's mean that we start changing the will of God. In any way, we're going to continue worshiping God. With sweet words or beautiful words. Like that, we don't know. We don't know what were their motivation. I wrote right here also get this, to bring this lesson to you. There are probably three mistakes. I'm not saying that I am 100% right. Number one, there are probably first mistake before to come to the tabernacle or to the tent. To worship God was this one, the number one, wrong incense. In Exodus, in the book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 35 to 38, we read the instruction how to prepare the incense, and that incense was only and only and only for God. Not for nobody else use, only for God. It was a delicious perfume that was going to the presence of the Lord. And God, if you read it in your home, we don't have too much time right now to be reading this one. But it said only for God. Somebody else use it for their own die. Gonna die. And probably when the, we read in the Bible, That was a and censor and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offer profane fire is making probably reference to wrong incense. Profane fire, fire is fire. Fire is fire. But you know what? If you use, for example, you are going to fire ca cardboard or material that is in color, the fire is going to change a little bit. It's going to be a little bit different. But it, the point is, the incense was the wrong incense, probably. Number two, when we read, we read in the Bible that says, More. But then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord. The expression right here, before the Lord, probably means what Leviticus chapter 16, verse 1. And verse 2 says, the expression before the Lord probably means that they enter to the tabernacle, but they not only enter to the holy place, they trespass to the other place that was, is called in the Bible, holy of holies. It wasn't allowed for them to enter to that place only to the high priest once in a year for the atonement feast to come to the presence of the Lord. Probably the context. If we read in the Bible, if you read it at home, or we can read it very, read it very quickly, and we're going to see that it's the context of the, of the thing that really happened with them. 
Leviticus chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. Now the Lord spoke to Moses after, after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they had approached the presence of the Lord and died. Number two, the Lord said to Moses, tell your brother Aaron that he shall not enter at any time into the holy place inside the veil before the mercy seat which is on the ark or he will die or I will appear in the cloud over the mercy seat. It's not allowed to enter to the holy of holies whatever you want. Probably that was another mistake. They enter when the Bible will read in the Bible over there before the presence of the Lord. They enter to the holy of holies. And like I said before, pride, arrogance. We are priests. I can take the place of the, an elder. Why not? Why can't take the place of one apostle? Why not? And the third point, alcohol. Very quickly, let's read it. Leviticus chapter 10. Verse A through verse 11. This is also the context of this case. 10, 8 to 11. The Lord then spoke to Aaron saying, Do not drink wine or a strong drink, neither you nor your sons, when you, with you, when you come into the tent of meeting, so that you will not die. It is a perpetual status throughout your generations. And so as to make a distinction between the holy and the profane, and between the unclean and the clean. And so as, the, as to teach the song of Israel all the status which the Lord has spoken to them through Moses, to make a distinction. Maybe they were drunk it, they took the wrong incense. They went to the wrong place. And what happened? They died. Anyway, we are going to worship our God. They were, they, they were no pagans. They were two men of God. Let's be careful. Let's be careful how are we worshiping our Lord. We must be very careful. careful. And last, last point of the lesson. How to worship God? Simple. Our brother uh, Pete was leading the, the second prayer. In the spirit and truth. That's what Jesus said to the woman, to the Samaritan woman. In John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in the spirit and in truth. What? It doesn't mean in the spirit. It's simple. It means within is more originate within and from the heart. With a good conscience, with a sincere heart, more motivated by our love for God and gratitude for all he is and has done for us. That's mean in the spirit. Jesus, he didn't say only that. With a good heart, but also in truth. What's mean in truth? According to the instruction given by God. Jesus said, your word is true. So, two points. With a sincere heart, according to to the Bible. This is similar to what Jesus said in, in Mark chapter 16. When he's talking, giving instruction to his apostle. Mark 16, 16. He said, if we say you must believe and to be baptized. 
you are visitor this morning with us, we invite you to worship God in spirit and in truth, according to the, the, how God is commanding through the scriptures. And Jesus said to this woman, my father sent me to seek that kind of worshipers. This is the kind of worshipers that Jesus is looking for or seeking for to bring to his kingdom. We invite you, you are not a child of God. We invite you this morning to come to Jesus' faith, believing in him, like the Savior of the world, and be baptizing for you the forgiveness of your sins. The lesson is yours, and God bless all.